and welcome to another edition of Asked and Answered, video podcast from Healthcare Packaging Magazine. My name is Jim Krizan, and I am the VP of Brand Development for Healthcare Packaging. And today on the phone, we have Jeff Reed, the Global Market Manager of Wheaton Industries. Our topic today, current trends and developments in healthcare packaging. Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself and briefly describe what Wheaton does. Hi, Jim, and thanks for having me. As you mentioned, I'm Jeff Reed. I'm a Global Market Manager here at Wheaton Industries. I focus primarily on the packaging business segment here at Wheaton Industries. A goal of mine over the past 12 months has been keeping up with the key trends in the pharmaceutical industry and talking with customers around the globe in the pharmaceutical industry to find out what are their challenges they could face on a daily basis. With these challenges, I work with the leadership team here at Wheaton Industries to develop purpose-built solutions around these challenges. And it actually helps us to service the pharmaceutical industry more effectively. In terms of Wheaton Industries, Wheaton has over 128 years of experience uh, supplying primary packaging components to the pharmaceutical industry. And these packaging components can come in several different forms and types starting from plastic to glass vials, rubber stoppers, ampules, and your traditional media bottles. Very interesting. So what kind of business drivers are you saying in the industry uh, from your perspective as a global manager? One big driver that I'm seeing is that the pharmaceutical industry is moving more towards ready-to-use product. And ready-to-use product means that the packaging component can be put into a fill line and then filled with the pharmaceutical end product. Mm -hmm. Um, Before it does so, it has to go through some critical processes that meet USP standards. Three of these processes are particulate cleaning, which is a pre-sterilization process, and it's done through a series of USP purified water and water for injection rinses, And it's meant to reduce the amount of subvisible particles that can be in a packaging component. The next step would be the depyrogenation step. This is done at high temperatures of 250 degrees Celsius. And it's meant to reduce the amount of bacterial endotoxins that can be found in a packaging component. The last step would be the sterilization step. There are three main methods for sterilization. High temperature and pressure sterilization chemical sterilization, and radiation sterilization. This is meant to reduce the amount of microorganisms that can be found in a packaging component. So what pharmaceutical companies want is to actually receive a packaging component that underwent these processes so they can just take the product and fill it with their pharmaceutical drug product. And that's really what differentiates Wheaton is the fact that we don't only offer the primary packaging component but we offer it ready to use so the so pharmaceutical drug manufacturers can focus on what they do best, and that's manufacturing pharmaceutical drugs. Interesting. So can you take uh, our listeners through a few of the applications that Wheaton may see on a daily basis? The biggest application I see on a daily basis is lyophilization, and this is done at low temperatures and decreased vacuum or decreased pressures. Uh, In terms of pharmaceutical packaging, it's usually done in a vial with a rubber stopper and seal. What happens is that pharmaceutical companies have to store their products for an extended period of time. So it's, it's critical to actually have this done to the pharmaceutical drug product to preserve the life of it. I've found that even the selection, selection of the rubber stopper is critical in the overall application. I broke up the rubber stoppers into three main categories, the first being what we would call an igloo rubber stopper. This rubber stopper has the most surface area of rubber onto the glass vial. This is advantageous to use if you're actually doing in-house filling or the drug product's going to be stored for an extended period of time. The next rubber stoppers, group of rubber stoppers, would be the two or three-leg rubber stopper. This would have a little less surface area of rubber onto the glass vial, 
So it's good to use, but not if it's for an extended period of time. It still suffices in-house filling, but if the drug product is meant to be stored for an extended period of time, then you would want to go with the igloo style. The last style would be the two-leg stop stopper. The two-leg stopper would be the most economical, and it would be the least surface area of rubber stopper onto the glass vial. This would be advantageous to use for diagnostic applications anytime you're not injecting a drug product, so you don't have to worry so much about contamination since it's not going into the human bloodstream. Um, one niche application that I'm starting to see more of is actually nuclear medicines. And with this, these are made of radioactive substances that are meant to treat or cure an actual disease in uh, one of the patients that are taking it. What I'm finding is that these drugs are extremely pricey, so making sure you get the entirety of the drug product out of the vial is extremely important. What we have at Wheaton is what we refer to as a V-vial. The V-vial has a conical bottom shape at the bottom of the vial, so you can actually pull the entirety of the product out of the vial. So it's unlike a serum vial, which is a flat bottom, this one has a conical shape, so the entirety of the product comes out of it. That is fascinating. You know, Jeff, when we poll our readers, uh, so many of them complain that the life sciences, you know, pharma, med device, and, and biologics are, are slow to innovate and, and change. What kind of packaging developments have you seen over the past couple of years? When it comes to innovation, I think it's extremely important to innovate around what the actual challenges are from the customer. One challenge, one concern I'm seeing more in the pharmaceutical packaging and diagnostic packaging industry is what we refer to as delamination. And delamination is the flaking off of glass that will come from the inner part of a glass vial into the end product. So one innovation that Wheaton has just introduced is known as dual fusion vials. And with these vials, they're made from COP, which is a plastic, it stands for cyclic olefin polymer, and the inner part of the vial has a quartz-like material inside the vial. Hmm. The lining is only 500 nanometers in thickness, so you don't even see it with the human eye. So you have this chemical characteristics of quartz inside the vial, so you don't have to worry about the flaking off like you would if it was borsoca glass. It's also, it also combats the concern of extractables. Extractables are chemical species that could migrate from the actual packaging component into the end product. Again, since it's this quartz-like material, it's less likely for this to, uh, to occur. And since the outside is a plastic, you get best of both worlds. So it's always easier to ship plastic. You don't have to worry about breakage. Mm -hmm. And also you get the chemical characteristics of a coarse-like material. So you get the best of both worlds when it comes to uh, packaging pharmaceutical drug products. Well, looking down the road now, in your opinion, <laughs> what can healthcare packaging uh, readers expect in the next five years? What's coming up? I think we will start to see more and more regulations that combat counterfeit drugs. Counterfeit drugs has been an increasing issue over the past decade or so. I actually just read a recent report in the World Health Organization, and it stated that 30% of the medicines that are on sale are currently counterfeit, and 50% of those medicines are actually offered online. So with this said, packaging manufacturers will start to be challenged more and more to move toward counterfeit detection within the actual packaging component. So in simple terms, each packaging component will incorporate a specific digit into that unique ID that provides out anti-counterfeiting measures. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us with Healthcare Packaging Asked and Answered. and We appreciate your insights. Have a great day. You too, Jim. Thank you.